Yes. How do we see Gen AI transforming business from an Adobe point of view? And in particular, in Adobe Research, what are we inventing that uh, will help us um, help our customers transform their businesses? Broadly speaking, you can think of it in two uh, broad areas. On the left, there's the uh, creation and editing of media. This includes images, video, audio, and so on. And on the right, there's the uh, analysis of uh, generation of campaigns and then the analysis of response to those campaigns, which are often powered by the digital media that's created with our mainstream uh, media editing tools. So um, one of the things that's come up today uh, and always comes up in AI is where does the data come from? So of course we exploit many different sources, including our stock photography uh, business that then gives us a highly moderated source of Im images. But we're also interested in capturing unusual or unique data sets. So on the left is a, a light stage that we, uh, we commissioned. We previously built our own, but the off-the-shelf one was actually better. And this is used for capturing uh, data sets under a variety of lighting conditions so we can train models for relighting. And then the topic of the next uh, video is the uh, image on the right, which is how do you get ground truth matting data for um, natural subjects? So this sounds easy, we have blue screen, but blue screen is actually an under-constrained problem. And we found that we were training things based on the output of previous algorithms that were themselves trained. And so we wanted to go back to ground truth and try to do that. And the way we did that was to um, leverage an idea that came out in SIGGRAPH in about 2005 of using cross-polarizers with two cameras. But there's a new device from Sony which has little micro polarizing filters in each subpixel. And if you do that, then hopefully the video will play. Uh, one more click. You can get really strong ground truth data. So you actually use an LCD screen as the background, just displaying white. And this camera gives you four channels of polarizing related information. If you use it in the way that was previously published, you end up with very noisy images. But we have a new breakthrough idea, which is about to be presented at CBPR. Um, and these are some of the results from it. And you can see that you get very, very clean ground truth data. Um, even though this setup is not practical for doing a large movie shoot, we can capture a data set that then lets us train better blue screen or green screen extraction algorithms. So it's really an example of an AI-inspired data capture uh, with a subsequent use case using a derived model. So, um, one of the challenges if you have highly moderated data where you've removed all of the, uh, all of the uh, trademark content, because that's part of your policy, is if you then sell it to an enterprise that wants to create their trademark content, there isn't an easy way to do that. So we have uh, also developed fast algorithms for train your own model. So this takes our core Firefly generative model and uh, then lets enterprises customize it with their own content. And uh, so they won't accidentally create content from any other vendor in the backgrounds or anything, but they'll definitely have full control and uh, end up with a very high quality um, uh, example where they upload their own data to the server. They get to have a versioned model, which is just for them to use. And so we have a multi-tenant uh, model for this. So here you just upload the images. And then once you've done that, you can we have a, a pseudo brand that we invented just to demonstrate the idea without using proprietary content called Drip, which is a drinks uh, brand. And then once you have it, you can use it to generate um, large variations and so on. So one of the things about scaling content is that we want to um, generate multiple variations for all different form factors of display and different styles. So here is an example of this where it's sort of the combinatorial explosion of customizing something for a target segment and then all of the devices that that segment might have. And it rapidly means that creative people are not doing creative tasks and get grumpy about it. And also it's easy to either make a mistake or just burn through a lot of uh, budget doing that. Whereas by doing this automatically with Gen AI, it's, it's one of those everyday tasks that lets them focus on being creative. 
So um, one of the other variations that you have to think about, of course, being a global company, is all of the different language versions that you need to do for anything related to text, audio, and video. And so um, the grandest challenge is probably redubbing videos in other languages. And so we have developed um, models to do that for a wide variety of spoken language and also reanimate the lips to match. So this isn't creating um, arbitrary video from text. It's really taking a pre-existing recording, translating it, and so on. So if the demo gods are friendly. What's up, Zayun? What are you doing? Hola, estamos trabajando una manera fácil de traducir y doblar videos. Wait, what? Oh, c'est traduction ingénierie par l'IA. I'm working on this with my team, the speech AI team at Adobe Research. Hi. Hi. Can we take a sneak into what that means? Sure. With this technology, you can upload your video and have it dubbed and translate into various languages. It will match your voice and it will generate new leap motions to match those languages. Wait, wait, wait. This is ganz einfach. Wir freuen uns sehr darüber. Siamo così entusiasti di questo. È facile, stiamo molto animati con questo. Stiamo molto entusiasmati con questo. Noi siamo molto entusiasti a questo sujet. We're so excited about this. Keep a year out. So there, he's wonderful, <laughs> has great energy. Uh, he doesn't speak all those languages, but we do have some people who do, so they can sort of sanity check it. I think the main thing there is not only is it very fast and efficient, particularly for, say, lower budget movies where you want to be on social quickly, but it captures the voice of the original performer rather than having another actor speaking in a foreign language. So in some ways it's better than the hand on stuff. Obviously it's uh, still a work in progress, but very extremely promising. So um, switching gears to the other side of that first diagram I showed you, um, one question is how do you generate marketing campaigns? And how do you have customer empathy. So often with digital marketing solutions, you end up with lots of bar charts and pie charts of this and that attribute of somebody. And I was at a conference about 10 years ago, one of Adobe's uh, summits, and uh, a retailer stood up and said, well, in the old days, we used to dress up mannequins to look like the different customers that we were thinking of marketing to. And I thought, that's such a fantastic idea. Why don't we use Gentech to do that? So that idea then blossomed into, could we use uh, LLMs to generate the customer journey for the campaign, but also generate graphics which um, give you a sense of uh, what, what it would look like. So this, this would be the input. And then we have um, essentially a nice graphic that's created by uh, Firefly based on the persona of the, a typical person that might, and you might generate several of these if there's a variety of people. And then it comes up with an overall description of the campaign, but then more importantly, it comes up with um, an idea for the campaign that you would then pitch, and, and then it can also generate a customer journey. So it starts with the persona who, who you're trying to appeal to, then how do you get their attention or awareness, um, then um, how do you, you know, that person would then be assessing opportunities and where would they look for that? And then how do you help with booking the, the event? Then um, you don't just wait for them to show up, you send them a message before they arrive saying looking forward to seeing you or maybe saying something about the restaurant, you might want to try the lobster or something like that. And then hopefully they have a wonderful experience and they take lots of pictures and then they want to share it with friends on social media. And then afterwards, um, you know, you're sort of part of that, easing the path to them then sharing it, going viral, inspiring other people and so on. So this is, uh, you know, something that would otherwise be in the minds of very experienced marketing people by having the AI capture at least a rough sketch of how to do this it's a good starting point. People may then want to bring their own original flair and take to it, but it's a, sort of a vision of how this could be. Uh, and you know, this is actually generated using real AI. It's not just mocked up. Um, so uh, we also have a document business called Acrobat, PDF, you may have heard of. And uh, we recently launched an AI assistant which shows up in the margins of documents and lets you ask questions about the document and so on. 
One, the most important thing on this slide is the little one inside a red circle. And the reason it's there is when it makes an assertion about the document, it also automatically has links to points within the document so you can check whether you agree with its conclusions. So we're trying to do that accountable attribution that will then lead to trust in the conclusions. Um, and we're excited to see how people are embracing this and already it's going very well. And of course, the longer the document, the more valuable this is in terms of saving time. So how might this go in the future? Um, we have a project called Gen Studio, which is looking to close the loop. So what that means is you generate a marketing campaign, you get data back, but some, some of the marketing was more successful than others. And maybe you can feed that feedback back into the generative process for the content. So there might be a designer who sort of set up the style and look and general design parameters, maybe through examples for the campaign. But then the campaign would essentially iterate with customers to find variations within that parameter space that the designer set up to. And the advantage of doing this is that today, if you do it by hand, you can maybe do 10 market segments for an important campaign. But with an automatic system, you could do hundreds or even thousands of segments. And the more you micro-personalize, as we heard earlier, potentially the bigger impact. So this is very exciting. So by now, you should be going, this is all exciting, but it's also kind of scary. You know, you can manipulate people, and which is you know, the right way to be thinking as uh, AI literate people. So we also um, spend time looking at content authenticity. So this was a campaign that we kicked off at Adobe, turned into a consortium, now is a WCPA standard, and um, which is part of the Linux Foundation. And what it says is, we, want, we don't want to tell you what's true or not, but we want to give you more information so that you can decide, has this asset been manipulated in a way that it no longer represents historical fact? Or So if it's the willing suspension of disbelief, you're happy to see a picture of Peter Pan flying through the air and not believe it's real. But if it's something purporting to be true, or at least worthy of consideration for making a decision, we wanted to give people the option to sort of see what happened to the image all the way from the sensor through editing tools uh, to the publishing or the touch point. And so these are called content credentials. And they are attached when you uh, take an image with certain new generation cameras that have this built into them from a variety of vendors. And also it's updated as you edit in Photoshop. And you can uh, choose to export this. So um, if you then want to say, well, did it really snow at the pyramids? That's, I missed that in the news, right? Um, it will then show you where that image came from, what it was composed of. And then you can even do an A-B comparison of the original image and the edited asset. So this is great, but you might think, well, what if the bad guys don't want to be found out, right? The good guys will say, I'm doing this for your delight, but if you really want to see what was actually the basis of it. So for instance, um, you might have adjusted even a news photograph, brightness and contrast, so it's easier to see the content. But if you've deleted whole regions and replaced other objects, you then at that point, you say, well, this isn't news anymore. It's, it's fiction, right? Um, so one of the challenges is if you just have these credentials associated in the file, somebody could then write something to strip them from the file. So the way CAI addresses that is that we, at the moment of creation, upload a copy to a distributed server or a centralized server, one way or the other. And then um, there's a robust fingerprint captured of the original content that's associated with the metadata. And so even if somebody tries to do things to the image so that it'll no longer be recognizable by the system as being the thing that you had, met, you had metadata for, we actually have a very robust way to do a reverse search. And as you can see, the images on the top have been fairly nastily damaged compared to the actual ground truth on the bottom. And the ground truth ones were retrieved from the images above. So, even in the area of integrity, there's actually a lot of uh, imaging science that goes into making it robust and not just fall over at the first attack. 
Um, we're trying to make it harder. We're not making it impossible because, you know, it's a it's an interesting world. But unlike forensics, where you can train things to defeat the the uh, detectors, uh, with provenance, if you do it right, and you can do robust um, fingerprinting, then it's much harder to defeat. So in summary, um, we're really inspired by the breakthroughs in the academic community. Adobe Research has a vibrant intern program, several hundred interns a year. Uh, we have close links with MIT. Uh, Sylvain's lab is just over the road. Um, we're also motivated by the creators that we have, all the wonderful content that they make. We don't want to displace it, but we want to amplify it in various ways and also give them an ability to ideate in final. In other words, they can kind of rapidly prototype things, but instead of a rough sketch, it looks like a much more polished asset, which may close the gap for their customer understanding what the intent is. Um, we build tools for users who apply their imagination and ask for new capabilities, but as importantly, we're part of a broader dialogue about AI ethics so that we can um, shape the future in a way that both listens to our customers, our creative community, and the larger world. And I always tell my staff, you know, invent the world you want to live in. And um, so far, this is where we are. So I hope that gives you an overview of uh, how we're thinking at Adobe.